Hi guys, good to see you again. You see, I've got a tie on and uh, need a haircut. Um, be doing that soon. So today we're going to look at ratio and proportion, special focus on direct proportion. So to begin with though, we're just going to look at the ratio question. So they could ask you something, they could tell you, say, say maybe that a to b is the same as 3 to 5. Okay, the ratio of a to b is 3 to 5. What we could then do is they could say, um, what fraction of b is a, or vice versa. So what you can do is, looking at this, we know for every three a's, there's five b's, you could write this as a, a fraction. So a over b. a was 3. b was 5. And then if you wanted to say, what is a? Well, a is equal to, multiply through by b, a is equal to three-fifths of b. If you wanted b, you probably would want to start with these fractions, the inverse. So flip the fractions over, that's b over a, 5 over 3, do the same thing. Another question, let's say you've got p to q is equal to um, 7 to 4. So I'm just looking down at questions down there. So you could then do the same, p over q is equal to 7 over 4. So p is equal to, multiply through by q, 7 over 4. Or one and three quarter cubes. Okay, so just really quick um, look at ratios and how we can potentially change them into fractions. Uh, next thing um, we're going to look at is direct proportion. Okay, so direct proportion is generally well, it's where you've got two variables. Okay, so the easy way to, do, to talk about this one is if we do an example. So let's say you've got a, a Saturday job and you earn say five pounds an hour okay ignoring the fact that you're, you're not going to pay tax or anything because you're not earning enough each week and so on so five pounds an hour if you work for three hours you do three times five okay your constant proportionality your k which we're going to come on to would be five okay if it is a graph a direct proportion graph so it's say the amount of hours you work, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the amount of money earned, okay, and let's say going up in fives, okay, it would end up being a straight graph, okay, they're in direct proportion. You work five hours, you earn five times five, 25 pounds, okay, so hopefully that's clear enough about there, all right, so that's direct proportion. Sort of question you could have. I could go through a few examples because a bit of a, a method and technique that I want you to use to write down um, sort of five steps. So, uh, what have we written here? F, the force, oh, sorry, so the force is directly proportional. Directly proportional to the acceleration to the acceleration which is A, pretend that acceleration A is written over there, um, of the mass when F equals 96 a equals 12, F is the force. Find F when A equals 20, and the other part of the question, part B, would be find A when F equals 112. Okay, so this bit here, is the bit that we're going to go to, come to at the end, okay? Start off with, there's a few process, there's a bit of a process. The first thing we'd like to do is to write down F is proportional to A. That's the proportional sign, okay, and that's looks a bit like the infinity sign, but it's not joined up. Now, because it's directly proportional, that means we're multiplying by a constant, K, our constant of, of proportionality, that's a mouthful. So F is equal to K A, okay? Direct proportion is multiplying. We're multiplying. Go back to the example just a minute ago. 
five pounds an hour, thought we'd multiply them by three. And then we substitute the numbers given. So we've got F equals 96 and A equals 12. So 96 is equal to K times 12. And therefore we can work out what K is. K is equal to eight. All right, so steps. You're definitely gonna to need to do um, this step two. Step one, if you write that, great. Step two is really important. Substitute the numbers in. Step three, work out what K is. Step four, and then step five will be to rewrite your step two, this thing here, with your K. So it's F is equal to eight A. Okay, so K is eight. That is the important thing. F is equal to 8A. You can then use that over here. So a question using F equals 8A, part A, was find F when A is 20. So F is equal to 8 times 20. F is equal to 160, part B. F is equal to 112, and we've got um, our formula again, 8a, f equals 8a, so it's 8 times a, we need to work out what a is, so we do 112 divided by 8 is, how many is that then, 8, 16, uh, 14, is it, 4, eight? yeah, a is 14, all right, we're going to go for another example, Trunky head down those steps, okay, that's the important bit of this. I know, if we look at that question, you might have been able to have done it in your head, all right? but it's not going to be that simple when it comes to your exam. It's a good thing for you, you can always pause the video, rewind back, try and work out what's going on. So next one, why is proportional, that's directly proportional, to the square of x when x equals 3, y equals 36. And again, the question is find y when x equals 25, uh, sorry, x equals 5, sorry. And then the other one is find x when y equals 25. Okay, we'll come to those in a second. So y is proportional. Let's make that clear to directly again. So step one. Y is proportional to the square of x. Okay, now because it's a square of x, it might be worth you just putting the x squared on there. Right. Square of x, but the really important bit is to write down. Um, I'm going to leave it off actually. Is to write this line. Okay, this. Okay, because because that just means proportional to. You don't really need the x squared on there. Um, but this is important. This is your first line where you get marked from your exam. So y is equal to k x squared. Always k because x squared this line. X equals 3, we substitute those numbers in. So step 3, substitute the numbers in. You've got 36 for y, k times 3 squared. 36 is equal to 9k, k is equal to 4. Okay, so we've worked out what k is. Step 5, rewrite our equation, our formula from, question, from part 2. So y is equal to 4x squared. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, then we're going to use that for these. So question A, we're using the y is equal to 4x squared when x equals 5. So y is equal to 4 times 5 squared. Y is equal to 4 times 25. Y is equal to 100. Part B, again, using your y equals 4x squared. This time they tell you that y is equal to 25. Have they really done that? That's horrible, isn't it? Y is equal to 25. Oh, it's not really, is it? Y is equal to 25, and then you've got 4x squared. So we don't want um, 
4x squared, we divide by 4, so it's 25 over 4 is equal to x squared. And then we need to square root this. Well, the square root of 25 over 4, so 25 over 4, square root that. Square root of 25 is 5, square root of 4 is 2. The answer is 5 over 2, so x is equal to 5 over 2 for that. Going to do one more question. <laughs> This is the sort of topic which trying to do on a little whiteboard at home in your downstairs toilet isn't the easiest. Okay, you need a bit more space as you can tell. Yes, I am in the downstairs toilet. I did mention it on an earlier video, but anyway, so next one, y is directly proportional. I'm not sat on the toilet, wait, better make that clear. Over here. Directly proportional to the square root square root of x when x equals four, y equals fifty. And your questions over here again, I'm just gonna write them over here, it is when x equals nine. What does y equal? And the other one is when y equals 250, what does x equal? So, directly proportional to the square root of x. So y, directly proportional to x. Okay, so y is equal to k times the square root of x. Oh, steps, I'll just do one, 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 two. Again, step one. Great, you do it, don't need to do it. Um, step two is where you're going to get your first marks. So y is equal to k times square root of x. We then substitute the numbers in. So y is 50. We've got k, which we don't know yet, and then we've got the square root times the square root of x. Well, x is 4, so you end up with 50 is equal to 2k. So k is equal to... 25. So step, so step three, substitute it in. Step four, work out what k is. Step five, rewrite your formula. So it's y is equal to um, 25 times the square root of x. Over here, so part a, this one here, when we're using our formula, y is equal to 25 root of x. Um, substitute x equals 9, so y is equal to 25 times the square root of 9, so 25 times 3, 75. Part b, y is equal to 25 root x again, this time it's 250 is equal to 25 root x. Divide by 25, so that is 10 is equal to the square root of x. So we square it all, so 100 is equal to x. Okay guys, not my best video, I can appreciate that. It's a bit of, um, said, making excuses now, but a bit of a challenge doing this on this board. Um, so at the moment, um, don't know about you, but looking forward to a bit of telly in the evenings. Um, and lost my television remote today. Um, when I say lost it, I know where it is. I found it, found it again, but um, young man put it down the toilet. So uh, it's soaking wet. Um, it's been washed and cleaned, but still doesn't work. Anyway, hope you're having a good time. Um, hashtag I love maths. I should have been out there, really, didn't I? Keep it real. Rock on. Peace out. Stay safe. Pop, pop, pop. Skitty cat, cat. Boom.